Hey YouTube, Shukun Shubby here with a review of the Power Rangers 20th Anniversary Legacy Megazord from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the original Megazord. However, uh, they do not have the mold for the original Megazord anymore, apparently. So this is the 2010 version called the Dino Megazord from the 2010 line, but done up in a very, very nice, accurate diecast uh, setting. So we'll take a look at that. It'll be very, very cool. So here's a retro style box that is a lot like the original Megazord box. Um, obviously you have the legacy up here all chromed out, but uh, you got the Megazord in the middle. Down there, you've got all of the uh, Dinozords. On the side, you even have the Megazord stats, like on the old box. So that's kind of neat. Back here, it shows all of the uh, individual Dinozords there on the side. Five Dinozords can morph together to become the Mighty Megazord. But um, yeah, a very, very nice box. It's a thicker cardboard, too. It's not like the flimsy Go Say uh, Great Megazord box or anything like that. Like, this is a Sentai quality uh, package right here. So very, very cool. Let's get it open and take a look. And here are all the Dinozords out of package, all stickered up and all accurate. Now, like I said, each of these does have some form of die cast on them, as little as it may be. But a little bit of die cast goes a long way. Too much and you get a really crappy toy, and too little and you think, why bother? But this is a nice little happy medium, especially when you get it combined to the Megazord. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at these one by one and then uh, combine them. I will do a direct comparison to the 2010 release just to show off the differences since this is the same mold. Not going to look at the 1993 release um, at all until the very, very end uh, when we take a look at the combined Megazord all together. Because this is a toy that is celebratory of the 20th anniversary and it really deserves to be reviewed on its own merit and not in comparison to a toy released in 1993. Only reason I'm comparing it to the 2010 release is because it is the same mold. I do want to point out how this one is far superior. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the pterodactyl. I actually lied just now and starting with the mastodon because I want to go in morphing order. So uh, here we have the mastodon otherwise known as Jew Mammoth from Jew Ranger. Uh, and I really dig him. He is probably the most impressive out of all of these in terms of the amount of changes that they made. Uh, he's also got the most die cast. This entire arm section running through here, all completely die cast, giving his arms a lot of heft, a lot of weight, and this guy in general a lot of weight. Uh, to top it off, they really changed the shield portion of his face right up here. All done in a nice gun metal as very accurate to the show. The tusks and the trunk are all painted in Bandai Silver paint, which looks absolutely phenomenal. And here he is next to the 2010 version, which, uh, as Bruno of MMPR Toys pointed out, uses a copious amount of gradients in their stickers, particularly up through here. And you can kind of see it a little bit through here, too, if we compare the two side by side. So very weird choice on their part. And I guess to save on money, they cast this in black plastic, the same as this one. So it was a little bit inaccurate. That one wasn't too bad, didn't bother me too much. But seeing how beautiful the gunmetal look on uh, the head is on this guy... This one's completely a waste of space and time. Uh, nothing really too crazy here. You might be thinking, hey, Shuki, where's the die cast? Because obviously this is just plastic. Right there in the noggin. Yeah, the head is entirely made of a die cast. So that is very cool. Because, um, I mean, if you did this entire shield and die cast, you would get probably one of the weirdly balanced figures ever and it's just too much for the plastic to handle so by putting it in the head you give the figure a little figure i guess yeah i guess it's a figure a little bit of extra weight which is always appreciated in these kind of things um while not overdoing it to uh, ruin the toy not too big a difference when you uh, compare the 2010 side by side uh really the only difference is a couple of the stickers like right here like we mentioned before gradients everywhere um, but while this one has kind of a 3D-ish appearance, you feel like those are raised. They're not, but they kind of look it. And then this one was fixed to be a little bit more accurate. Only issue I have with pretty much this entire figure is the triangle stickers down here no longer fit in the molded out space. So they're a lot smaller and rounded. It's kind of like the inner portion of this. And they didn't do the outer portion. 
So that's a, a minor nitpick. It's not really too big of a deal. Um, the gray used is a little bit sparklier on this one for some pieces. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's coming across decently, so you can kind of see it in there. Uh, but yeah, nothing too crazy. Uh, only other difference that I can point out is the eyes are bigger and there's a pink stripe there. And here we have the good buddy Triceratops. Um, he, he is tiny. Him and the Sabertooth Tiger are very tiny and thin. But that's not a bad thing. His entail, his entail, his tail, as you can tell, is completely die cast, giving him quite a bit of heft, particularly in his buttocks area. Um, and this can, as normal, stay um, standing, actually. It's very cool that they managed to engineer it in a way to the die cast one so heavy that it pushed it down. In fact, it's actually kind of hard to push down. Uh, the horns are now done in a nice Bandai silver. And um, pretty much every detail that needs to be there is now there. So like I said, uh, shinier horns are always appreciated and the color is a little bit better up through here. You got a new white line through there that is show accurate. And then obviously these were black before and they are now a nice gunmetal color just like the uh, Mastodon. Uh, and then the stickers lost their gradient, which is good because that was really awful, honestly. But um, it's amazing what some die casts can do because this one feels a lot more like a toy than this one does. Well, I mean, that came out wrong. Feels more like a collector's toy. Well, this one feels more like an actual kid's toy. And the saber tooth tiger, uh, one that was probably my least favorite in all incarnations. But that's not necessarily uh, a knock against it or anything. Die cast tail, just like the triceratops, again can do the firing thing. Um, really cool. There's. I'm not really sure too much on the differences, so we'll have to bring him in and take a look. But like I said, these do move as per normal. Um, these wheels don't actually roll, so you don't have to worry about that or anything like that. But yeah, looks a lot better, am I right? Um, particularly in the head, the eyes are now the proper red color, fully painted. This one kind of looks like uh, he's sleeping or just kind of really effed up with his eyeliner or something. Plus his nose came chipped right out of the box. Um, I think I put the sticker on. No, I didn't. The sticker's just designed right. So that's a start. Um, and the black portions right along the head here add quite a bit. Along with up here, the red is new. Uh, again, lost the gradient, so it looks a lot more accurate. Both wheels are now painted, so that is a start. Um, but yeah, overall a nice, the uh, gray is actually covered in here now too. So a lot of nice little uh, additions. Now this sticker I might have put on backwards. I'll have to double check. But it, the sticker's definitely changed regardless. Not too worried about that sticker. I'm going to pose it in the Megazord mode anyway. Yeah. Uh, but again, the Bandai Silver Paint on the teeth right here looks uh, fantastic. I love that silver paint, so anytime it's used... Absolutely. And finally, the big daddy of them all, the Tyrannosaurus. Uh, yeah, I, he's he's kind of weird because the die cast in his feet offset his balance a little bit. So if you don't get him just right, he tends to tip very easy. If you bring his leg out anymore, this can't go forward anymore, and then he just becomes very heavy on his front foot there. So you kind of have to find his little happy medium. Uh, which is difficult to do. His arms are dingy as all get up. But um, if you kind of ignore that, he does look very nice. And like I said, as with all of these, the most accurate Tyrannosaurus we've ever gotten. Like just looking at them, you can tell. Uh, not only because of the whole die cast kind of knocking him back thing, so his, his entire stance is a little bit different. But um, up here, nice metallic ish. Not metallic, but it's got a nice little gloss to it paint all through here the eyes are a nice brighter color um, this is outlined right up here in black the white outline on the megazord head which we'll take a look at soon uh, the uh, red all through the waistline here and how did you get this messed up tyrannosaurus there we go uh, the red all through here this is now a bland color which is actually accurate sticker now made to be accurate tail has the beautiful silver and black uh, running right through it. Uh, from the front here, the stickers are just kind of chromed. Nothing too crazy about from the front here. But um, still very, very much incredible. 
And the uh, gun sticker, flamethrower, I guess, uh, in here is now bigger and more accurate to how it should be. But um, all in all, just very much uh, a beautiful rendition of the uh, Tyrannosaurus. All right, I'm not going to bother to show the comparison between the tank mode because, honestly, it's the same differences that were in these individual ones. But we will compare the actual Megazords. Uh, so if you just kind of... Actually, I don't think you have to do that all the way. Something right along the lines of there. Bring that up. Pull out the Mastodon head. That will pop right there. Fold that up and that will pop in right here. Um, if it wasn't obvious already, this is using the Zord Builder technology introduced in the MMPR 2010 line. And that has carried on through Samurai, Super Samurai, and now Megaforce. So you can actually use the Legacy Megazord to combine with... Um, Samurai Megazord, Gosei Great, Battle Claw, anything like that. Uh, so if that's something that kind of floats your boat and you like these uh, comparisons, it can add a little heft uh, to those. So that's always something. That'll pop in right there. And now one part in the instructions does show flipping these arms around so that the hollowed out plastic isn't showing, but I don't feel like doing that. That will peg, peg, I use the term peg loosely, in right there, put the guns on him. And you have the tank mode. I guess you can open up his mouth so it's like he's firing. But yeah, here is the tank mode. And um, it, it adds a ton of heft to it with the die cast. Because like I said, your main points of the die cast right here are through the thighs of the T-Rex and the uh, arms of the Mastodon. So you've got a ton of heft right in the base here. Um, that's kind of counterbalanced by the tails of the uh, Triceratops and the Sabertooth Tiger. So you've got a lot of balance here that actually makes for a very nice looking uh, tank mode. And uh, while a lot of the detail doesn't actually pop in this mode, um, again, it's the most accurate tank mode that we've gotten so far. And uh, all in all, it actually looks quite uh, impressive. So it's not a bad mode to display it in. I wouldn't really choose it. But um, the fact that it's there and does look great is a nice little touch I think so very cool overall so now let's go ahead and start the Megazord sequence has been initiated thing pop that out swing the T-Rex head down to the chest cavity just like that fold up the pterodactyl tail will fold comfortably right up here I'm gonna peg that in right here these just very much easy that wasn't English uh, fold right up here fold those in these will peg right into the feet back here and bamage there we go so not bad not bad at all uh, the chrome finish on the die cast actually gives this guy a lot of look and I really dig it uh, the only thing I kind of wish was chromed would be this portion right here just to kind of even it out since you have so much shiny up here between the, the stickers right along here and then the chrome on the die cast between the thighs and the arms, that just looks a tiny bit out of place. So that's the only thing I can real nitpick on in terms of this. But I mean, you have the white outline up here 
on the Megazord head, which is fantastic because nothing's had that ever. Um, completely accurate to show stickers as far as I'm aware. Uh, and I mean the silver paint down here on the horns and the teeth look great. The chrome portion uh, from the tails from the die cast match the thighs very well. Yeah, you do have this open part where the joint is, but there really wasn't too much of a cho choice there. Silver paint's going to flake off, and you can't make a die cast because that would just be awful. Um, so they, they didn't really have a choice. Same here with the hands and stuff. There really wasn't too much they could do there. Um, a little bit of extra paint there would be nice, but it's not really a particular complaint of mine. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pop that open. Place that in his hand right there. So you got the uh, Mammoth Shield, as the box calls it. So that's always fun. And a Chrome Power Sword, uh, which is great. It is a uh, vac paint, metal, chrome, whatever you want to call it. Um, that That's fine and dandy, except the fist is very tight. Uh, it does not... Um, it fits in there kind of okay, but it's kind of a pain to get out. You just kind of have to wiggle it. And... That's fine. I don't really have a problem with that. But if you keep pulling it in and out, uh, no puns intended, the chrome will flake. Um, I haven't had that happen yet, and I probably don't plan on doing this enough to make it happen. But if it gets a lot of wear and tear, there is a chance that it could flake off. But um, the chrome finish on it actually kind of seals the deal and makes this a completely awesome package. And so here is the Legacy Megazord and the 2010 Dino Megazord side-by-side. Uh, -side. And you can kind of see what I was talking about. Just the very subtle things like the chrome of the die-cast and the right rightness of the uh, Mastodon shield is absolutely fantastic and very much makes this toy pop. You've also got um, other things that this one doesn't have like the uh, blue or blue, black right here in the... Uh, in the legs that uh, extends down. You don't have the additional color right here in the Sabertooth Tiger and Triceratops. The gradient stickers on this one is a little bit of a mess and they look very strange. Uh, plus you have the uh, more accurate head up here between the white lines, the uh, yellow eyes, and the uh, the tip up there is all gold on the Dino Megazord, something I never really noticed until now. But it's corrected for the Legacy version. And uh, just all the additional paint applications and uh, the shiny of the stickers and the silver paint and the additional paint and everything just looks absolutely great on this. And since I know people are going to ask, here is the Sabertooth Tiger and Triceratops heads down here. So there we go. Uh, absolutely, uh, this one is top of the line. And something I didn't really want to do, but I know if I didn't, people would complain. Legacy of Megazord versus the 1993 Megazord. And now I know a lot of purists love and fap over this thing. Like, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh, the 2010 one sucks. The 1993 one's so much better. Blah, 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 blah. But honestly, I mean, the stickers on this one are completely wrong. Uh, for one thing. I mean, if you have a Dijujin or have a Megazord that is repro-labeled with the Daijujin stickers, then it is a ton more accurate. Because uh, when you have the Power Rangers version, you have things like uh, this on the Saber 2 Tiger. All this blue that shouldn't be there at all. Uh, but, I mean, the 1993 one isn't a bad toy whatsoever. Uh, if you're a fan of how blocky Sentai robots usually are, then you're probably going to favor this one. And you know what? That's fine. It doesn't really bother me that people would like this one more. Uh, just if you think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, really look into more robots because it's not. But anyway, uh, the Legacy Megazord does stack up well. Uh, Height-wise, this one only beats it out by probably an inch at most. Um, granted, this one is a lot more slimmed down. Like I said in my comparison between 2010 and 1993, this one just, it's slimmed down. It's more like the suit in the show compared to an actual Sentai robot toy. Uh, so you have to keep those things in mind, that this one is slimmed down to basically cheapen it for the 2010 release. However, uh, these are actually both about the same price uh, at retail, although he's probably adjusted for inflation. He's probably a lot more. 
But you have to keep in mind, this one now has die cast. It has accurate stickers, a ton more paint. This is the most accurate version of Daijujin slash um, the Megazord you could get, besides getting the uh, Super Robot Chogokin one, but that one doesn't transform, so it doesn't really count. This one is the most accurate. I don't care what you say about the the width of the legs or the fact that it's not blocky and it looks streamlined and, all. Oh, it sucks because it's not 1993. This one is a fantastic, fantastic toy. Now, is this thing worth the $60 that Toys R Us is charging? It's argumentative. If you're a fan of MMPR and have grew up with Power Rangers or you're a nostalgia whore that really, really loves MMPR and thinks that's the greatest thing and all our Power Rangers suck, then you'll love this. The die cast absolutely brings this toy to life. And honestly, the 2010 feels like absolute crap compared to this one. Uh, the die cast brings a lot to it. The additional paint, the additional stickers, additional, wow. The uh, fact that it is the most accurate version of this you could possibly buy right now in the market. Uh, it's just It brings a lot to the table. Um, if you have the 2010, then this one is kind of only a thing you really should pick up if you're an absolute diehard collector. If you're not, then you're probably happy with the 2010 one. Between this one and 1993, my vote still goes for this one. Like I said, most accurate. If the fact that it's streamlined bothers you so much or you really hate the Zord Builder system, which is really stupid because the Zord Builder system is actually really cool, then it's really up to you but as it stands him on his own he is absolutely a phenomenal toy definitely worth the 60 dollars now if they want to do this to more bring in the die cast bring in the paint upcharge for collectors sure absolutely will they probably not they had this mold it was very easy to upgrade considering the original release was so hollow and so plastic that there was really nowhere to go but up uh, so I don't think they're going to do anything else with Legacy Megazords or anything like that. It will be interesting to see if they do anything, but I'm not expecting it. But as he stands, definitely worth the $60, uh, and absolutely, uh, a definite pickup if you're a fan of this franchise or MMPR or just his design in general. Really like G-Ranger, still worth the pickup because, again, most accurate. So, very cool, definitely worth it, and um, absolutely an astonishing item that I was not expecting to like so much until I absolutely held it, felt the weight, saw how accurate it was, that it really, really won me over. So, definitely worth it, no questions asked. So, you can check out shukanshobi.com for list updates and my reviews and hauls, and of course, check out Rogers, Rangers, and Rambles, the podcast from the latest token news in the curiosest way possible. Uh, and of course, this is a Toys R Us exclusive toy, so you will have to pick this up at your local Toys R Us store or on ToysRUs.com. So take care and have a great one. Bye.